grandparents purchased land down in the Empire Mountains. My name was Jerry Jean Bachman. Um, now, how many of you know where the Empire Mountains are? Oh, very good. They are that direction. Okay, so Tucson and, and Vail really is such a beautiful place. Um, and one of the things I like the most is that it is encircled with these wonderful mountains. So we have Tucson Mountains to the west. Um, we have the Rin the Catalinas in the north, and then the Rincons, and way a little beyond, you can barely see them, the Whetstones, and then the Empires, and the Santa Ritas. So we're enveloped by these beautiful mountains. I grew up actually in Tucson. I went to Cornwell's High School, and I lived in the neighborhood just to the west or behind Evergreen Cemetery. Do you know where Evergreen Cemetery is? No? Okay. Um, and my grandparents had their own family business, and we all worked there. It was A&A Nursery. So um, I and my brothers always we grew up. Um, maybe I don't have it on. There he is. Okay, that's on. Um, we grew up, and I'm going to make this quick because Mr. Allen's here. I'm very excited to, to see Mr. Allen. Okay, so when they sold their business, they wanted to retire out in the country. And what's more out in the country, especially back in 1971, than Vail, Arizona? So uh, they purchased land down in the Empire Mountains, and they were actually the second people to purchase, the second family to purchase land down in what was the former Hilton Ranch. And the Hilton Ranch had been around um, since the 1880s. Harry and Louisa Hilton had actually homesteaded in 1882. That's when it freaked out. So a very old ranch finally breaking up in the 1970s. And, um, well, one of the several things I really remember about those first trips out there, because you can imagine how dark it was at night. No lights. It was one other family that had started building before my grandparents, and um, they were only out there on weekends. So if, if we went out there and my family, my mom and brothers and I would go out on the weekends and help them build their house. And um, I'm going to make this pretty quick, but I'm going to pass around a few pictures. And some of the pictures show the house being built. Some of the pictures have it built. There's a couple of me on a horse, and, and there's a picture of me with some guineas. So you can imagine, I you know grew up in the city, and so we would go out there to work, and once um, people used to not just expect to buy a ready-made house. And so my grandparents were of that generation where they built many of their own homes. And the first part, they would build one room to live in. And as they had money, they would add on. So they had all the plans for the house and knew how they were going to build it, but they just built it as they could go. And the first room was probably, it was like 14 by 14. So we would go out there, everybody would stay in there. There was an outhouse. You guys know what an outhouse is? The bathroom. Yeah. It's the outdoor bathroom. Yeah, so that was uh, a little bit of a new experience for me. Um, but if we go out there and we were going to head back into Tucson, or we'd say into town at night, there were there was still open range. She knows what open range is. What's open range? Anybody know? It is open land. Okay, and it's for cattle. And so cattle have priority. And this was still a working ranch. So there were two gates that we had to open and close, and one of them even had a lock on it. So you can imagine it was so dark, we were going down this dirt road. And um, my brothers and I would, all the way that long mile down that dirt road, be jockeying for who was going to have to open the gates. That was really scary. Because, you know, there were javelinas, there's cattle, there's snakes, there's all kinds of things. Plus, we used to think, well, if aliens were going to come back and uh, take over the world, we've <laughs> got about 60 inches of time. Oh my gosh, this would be like the ideal location. No one would ever know what happened to us. <laughs> So it would be so scary to open the door, you know, if you drew the short straw, you know what that means, you draw the short straw, and you're the one that has to do the terrible job. <laughs> and 
you open the door, run as fast as you could to the gate, with the flashlights, open it up, close, get back in, then you have to go another few hundred feet, do it again. Oh, we made it one more time um, <laughs> and survived our trip. It was, it was really pretty scary. The other thing my brothers and I like to do um, is go hiking and exploring, and that area out there is full of old mines and never go in one. But, you know, when you're young, like you guys are, it's, you think it's fun to have all these adventures. So we would um, explore all of these um, different places up in the hilltops, down in the valleys, and I'll just share that back in the 60s, you guys have heard of how, you know, the 60s and 70s were kind of a strange time in the United States. A lot of people, a lot of unrest, I think, sitting from uh, the Vietnam War and other social issues. But... Um, and there was a lot of drug use. And the Empire Mountains was really out, way out there. And people would go out there and raise marijuana. And uh, so one thing that my brothers and I experienced is when, when we were out hiking and exploring, you never knew if you turned down one little wash or one little valley, you might be met with someone with a shotgun because they were guarding their... Um, yeah, they're very long things, and that's a truth. Um, so it was a little bit wild and woolly out there still in the 1970s. Um, but we had a great time helping my grandparents build their home, and uh, that house is still out there today. Uh, for the first, we all carry cell phones all the time, don't we? We just feel connected all the time. But um, from 1971 until anything. Mm, about 1985, they finally got a telephone. And there were no telephone lines out there. And they actually went several years with no electricity. And then there's a, one of the pictures, oh, this one here. Um, do you guys just expect to turn the faucet on in your house and have water? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you pretty much do. Uh, but when you're building your own house, and, and that's still the case sometimes today, but especially in the, um, probably before the 90s, you would expect to drill your own well, and you're responsible for your own water supply. And their well was over 700 feet deep. It's the best water in the world, but it really good. Um, and if that little motor that brought the water up went out, what do you think you had to do? Go to the <laughs> Well, you either called in a company, it was really expensive to do that, or you set up a big tripod looking thing, and all the family and friends got together. Because basically, um, it's been my experience that when people live out in a real setting, um, everybody works together and helps each other. And so we would set up this huge tripod taller than this roof is, and um, people would take turns hauling those lengths of pipe up until you got to the very bottom where the pump that had gone bad needed to be replaced. So each of those sections of pipe are 10 or 12 feet long and they weigh a lot. And it was a big responsibility to be the one pulling up the pipe, taking the turn. Because if you drop that section of pipe, there's no way to get to that. So, um, I would say, you know, experiencing that, um, helping my grandparents build a house and living out there in the country and having guineas and chicken and peacocks and all kinds of stuff was a great experience. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I had that experience out here in Bay. And I'm going to stop. <laughs>